the double wrist lock uh, for, for, for jujitsu background guys, the Kimura, what are, what are some of the most common mistakes you see people make uh, with the double wrist lock that causes them to either sure. lose the position or just not have success? <clears throat> Improper framing and not being getting the most mechanical advantages possible. So let's say being too high up. Well, let me see if I can put my arm in front of this camera and get it into your shot here. Sure, yeah. Being too, too, being too high up on the wrist instead of being on the wrist and on the hand itself. Uh, you know, basically encompassing the whole joint. The other thing is not using a thumb. Nope, you're wrong. I don't care who you are. You try to tell me no thumb. It's like, oh yeah, you can pull it off, but no, you're wrong. No, it's not as good. Sorry, I, I'm right and you're wrong. Just fix your shit. <laughs> um, <laughs> the position of of where your hand and your knuckles are in 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 relation to the outside edge of the arm, so that instead of people fighting against your fingertips, they're fighting against your whole hand, which is a lot stronger. Uh, the other thing is allowing somebody's head to run, allow, allowing the head to come up off the mat, which will alleviate pressure on the shoulder and create space for them to maneuver. So you need to keep their head pinned. And once their head is stuck and pinned to the mat, once you start leveraging the shoulder up, the impingement takes over and you can blow out the joint, uh, which all of this is in my BJJ fanatics instructional. Uh, I know it seems unusual maybe to, to go over such basic mechanics as your first thing, you know, everybody wants to go out there and be like, Oh, every crazy pass I've ever heard of and every fancy entry. And it's like, no, no, no. I don't see any reason to teach you any of that. If your basic mechanics on how you use this hold are deficient. Plus everybody is already using it to some degree if they're enrolled or grappling and fighting and in some sort of school as it is, it's not much for you to make these adjustments to make what you already do better than it is to teach you a bunch of crazy ways to go after it. That's excellent. Man. I really like that a lot, man. What do you what do you think are some of the most important things to remember as far as like the breaking mechanics of the double wrist lock uh, and, and just overall body positioning to make sure that you're able to, to 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 complete the breaking mechanics in the first place? Well, this is one of the things that Billy helped me with, and it's called shortening the arm. And that's that's getting it pinned in and impinged as much as possible because people aren't very strong with this arm shoved in like that. Not nearly as strong as they are with it having even at 90. Uh, keeping that hand off the mat and I add what's called rotation to it to roll their thumbs under and their arms under and take away the ability for them to, to have uh, their ligaments and everything in line and instead taking more uh, slack out of the joint so that when you do apply that pressure, there isn't space for it to move uh keeping it that pin heavy on the top if we're if we're talking about finishing it from the top on that chest and head area so that they cannot lift up and then it's just a matter of it's elevating the shoulder and just having just enough space to drive the hand through if need be depending on their level of flexibility so if someone's going to get out they're going to have to be able to buck move bridge something but if they're pinned and stuck to the mat and they can't get up now when i'm applying that pressure that pressure is not able to be diverted to any other way if they're if they're pinned underneath you. That makes perfect sense. Yeah, there's like no alleviation of pressure at all. That's that's really awesome, man. Well, right. And if you've got that arm nice and shortened up and your framing is strong, let's say they even do bridge you, you could still finish it off your back and transition. You can still use the hold itself to maneuver their body as you're applying pressure now against that shoulder and making them have to then elevate their hips, roll through, move, whatever, to go with it so that, that that pressure isn't put directly through the joint. Um, so now it's a, it's a weapon for controlling your opponent. 